Hi, my name is Rich, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is part of a Sunday group where we call it the Intercontinental Group of Awesome, because we have folks in Europe and here in the U.S. who all get together on what is afternoon for us U.S. Americans, uh, late morning, I think, for Jen, and uh, evenings for our friends in Europe. We are playing the second of two sessions of uh, a hack of my game, Hit the Streets, Defend the Block. I'm showing you this particular version because uh, this is the new print on demand. It actually has the little Idiots Award on it. Isn't that cute? I love it. Um, Jesse Ross, who is an amazing designer in his own right, did some updated work on the layout uh, for this print on demand version. I'm pretty darn proud of it. Uh, and that's right, there's Alex's award because he was the artist for Hit the Streets to Pin the Block and earned himself an any. Jen's got one, and, uh, and so does Heidi. And Jesse's uh, award is sitting right here on my desk because he's in Minneapolis, and I keep saying, I'm going to go drive 25 minutes to deliver it to him by hand. Oh, uh, it's, it's a metal. Okay, fine. I'll just get mine. It's right here. Notice it's not very far. Do, 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 do. So anyway, it's our any celebration. Oh my goodness, we're all show and tell today. Uh, but the hack is for our Igoa verse, Mala verse thing that we've been doing for most of the summer. And summer's come to end, so of course now we are going to jump forward from the '90s, which is when the Mala verse games. Uh, our Monster of the Week, Monster Squad hack, our Minimum Rage, uh, all the other little bits that we did, like uh, the Planet Crashers game that Jen ran and some other things. All that took place in the 90s. Last week, we took the Igoa Mall and updated it to 2020. And then after, we took a few moments to feel depressed about what's happened to malls in our current day and age. And by the way, there's no pandemic in our fake world. It's still kind of apocalyptic to the poor mall. Uh, we jumped forward and uh, created mall walkers who are retired superheroes, right? We'll say superheroes, won't we, for Brutus? We'll just say retired superhero. But uh, uh, retirees who um, get mixed up in a little something. And uh, the, as I recall, Dr. Warp was the person that uh, had, you guys had run into one of his golden robots, uh, one of his lady trons, as he called them, uh, who was going into what used to be a radio shack, but instead is just a closed down shop, trying to find a PQ-38 modulator for anyone who knows that very very silly reference. Um, I apologize, I could not help myself. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't look it up because you will respect me less. Uh, maybe, probably. Uh, so you guys went off uh, hunting for, oh, that's right, you actually ran into, uh, rebuilt enough of the robot to talk to it, its head, and also got its address off of its foot because Dr. Warp is just that concerned about his personal property, I guess. Uh, the lot of you, after a flashback to some other things, the lot of you went out uh, in a not motorcycle that looks a lot like a motorcycle and a, I think an old person sedan, remember <laughs> correctly, had gone out to the old military missile silo that Dr. Warp calls home and we had ended with uh you guys moving a gate and then driving down this dusty road towards the silo off the distance and then missiles can hit you so anything that i've missed anything in, in pertinent from the game events okay cool so before we introduce characters let me remind uh everyone including myself of our lines and veils we have a line against sexual assault sexual coercion sexual violence. Uh, we have veils, which means that the content can exist, but we don't want to have it heavily on screen. Harm to animals, veil on sexual content, and torture. And then ask first, which is, hey, we're okay if this exists. Maybe before, though, it's situational. Before you introduce this content, please check in with the table, and if anyone, any one of us says, can you try it a different way, then we move on and try it a different way. And the ask firsts are harm to children, 
and then also an ask first on sexual content. So if some people are going to hook up, check in with the table. If everybody's cool with it, we just say it happens. We fade to black. Maybe some some jazz music plays in the background. Uh, the beaker, my chihuahua, is just sitting here with a little like chihuahua-sized Kong, and uh, I thought it was cute, so it distracted me. So there's that. Let's go around the horn, uh, starting from the left-hand side of the character keeper to the right to allow everyone to introduce their characters. Just a brief bit. Introduce yourself, tell us about your character, and then we'll jump right back in. So we start off with Tyler. Hi there, I'm Tyler, he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Golden Boy, who is a former sidekick who then went on to do a little heroing on his own. Uh, he is kind of a speedster with some light control um, and uh, kind of misses the old heroing life a bit. He, true, he has a golden retriever now that he just adopted in our uh, last session named Goldie. Um, and uh, he runs the, uh, or is part owner of a gym in the mall where he runs the senior Zumba class. And he also makes a, a bit of his money on uh, selling vitamins and supplements to his students. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Alex. Hi, I am playing Rafael Vieira Fernandez, aka the Peacock, or at least that's who he used to be. He's a bit of a a legacy hero. I think before him, his mother, before him, his grandfather, and so on. And and he's had, a, I think, a line of uh, um, sidekicks slash offshoots from his children and some also some, you know, kind of unofficially adopted kids. And I think some of them are now vigilantes. One of them isn't. Well, two. There's an accountant and also his son, Hugo, I think we settled on. We did. We settled on Hugo. Yeah. And he kind of, I think he gets by mainly through, you know, some of his own funds, retirement funds, and uh, money gets chipped in from his, uh, you know, his kids. Probably even Hugo as well, even though there's a kind of a very awkward, slightly cold, standoffish relationship. Yeah, so sad. All right, let's move on. Uh, next we have Jen. Hello, I'm Jen. I use she, her pronouns. I am playing Dana, Ma Dana Maddox, aka Dog, who also uses she, her pronouns. She's uh, kind of a refugee from a Mojoverse style place, or quite literally Mojo world. And, you know, she's been chilling on Earth for long enough to know what's going on around Earth. And spends most of her time nowadays hanging out on her piece of land, or maybe teaching boxing classes to young people. And also helping out with a dog rescue. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. And last but not least, we have Sabine. Welcome, Sabine. Introduce yourself. Tell us about your character. Hi, I'm Sabine. I use any pronouns. I'm playing Dr. Brutus Emery. He uses he, him pronouns. Dr. Brutus Emery was formerly known as Dr. Flux, the super villain who was infamous for uh, such things as the Brooklyn Bridge heist and other stuff like that. Um, but he turned a lead page and decided to maybe this super villain thing didn't really work for him or maybe it was actually a bit too heavy. And then he decided, hey, I'm calling myself Dr. Why don't I just go back to university and 
become a doctor and make my PhD needed. And then he worked in physics and chemistry for a while and um, had a few patents that he sold off and a few others that he released into the wild. And um, he's made a pretty penny though. He's uh, independently wealthy, though he hangs around at the bike shop in the mall fixing bikes or showing people how to fix their own bikes and stuff like that. And also he moonlights as the cyclist who paddles around the beach wood and surfs just as if that is ever needed. And if he's fast enough. And if it's not too taxing, I mean, his hip is not what it used to be. Nice. Nice. And that is our group of retirees. Uh, so we pick up immediately, like the it's a, I don't know if our comic book publisher decided to save a little of money, but the last panel of last issue, which was the missiles coming forward towards you guys, and we see the silhouette of dog riding the bike, uh, we pick up with the exact same panel, right? Uh, except like they went a little extra. There are some word balloons that bring it in, and they say, that's right, four missiles coming towards Dog. What in the world will happen? Will she survive? Will she be splattered into a thousand pieces? Mojo must know. The, the very next panel that we see is widen out and, and it's the Mojo verse. Like there's this huge dusty uh, world that has been reconstructed and there are these missiles coming towards what we see now is a younger dog? Like, what do we see? What's different about dog and what's the same? Hmm. So, I mean, the first thing that you would notice between younger dog and older dog is that, like, younger dog has the most radical neon pink mohawk she could possibly have. Just, just huge and rad and standing up even in the high velocity of riding a hover bike down the dusty desert. You know, she's in these really punk looking leathers with spikes on them and, you know, chain around the waist, big fuck off boots. Do they have cuffs? Do the boots have cuffs? I just, I just want to know what area no. we're in. No. Okay, no cuffs. No All cuffs. Right, uh, and yeah, just, you know, looking... looking more more solid younger dog was you know just kind of slightly bigger <laughs> um and then the things that are the same uh she's got the same riding posture the same attitude for sure uh the same of course love of neon pink and the same hover bike. Yeah, helmet? Mm, helmet. What are those? What's a helmet? For your safety? Uh, here's your Safe safety duck. Yeah. <laughs> safety is nice. getting out of the way. And we see all kinds of speed lines as you're racing along and the missiles are coming closer and we see a few like hovering camera bots and they're like coming in, getting tight shots of, of dog. We cut away to a bunch of like human, semi-human, various people from this weird mojo verse and they're like throwing down these weird domino looking chits of uh, credits and placing bets and we see all kinds of numbers and we see dog written there and all kinds of odds are going in of like the various types of ways that dog is going to die and then there's this huge huge amount of odds of dog surviving yet again. Uh, so dog with four missiles coming towards you what do you do? Well I uh, reach into a side compartment of my hover and I break out my big fucking gun. <laughs> and I uh, punch on the brakes, do a rear slide out and spray them hard before punching it and trying to sort of 
juke to the side, continue evading any missiles that don't get blown up. Nice. In my first spray. So let's um, let's do this as a bit of a refresh. So we're actually doing a flashback as a refresh roll. Let's have you roll with heart um, because you're drawing upon your memories and your, your compassion about getting things done. So which mode do you think she is in here? I think this is a super mode. I don't think that it's particularly normal I would agree. to have to shoot missiles out of the sky. There's just something about it that just doesn't there's nothing day to day about that. Not day to day about that at all. And if it were, there'd be a day I wouldn't enjoy. Awesome. So then you're rolling with that. And I think you're being very bricky. You're going after this uh, violence with violence. So mm -hmm. then that is going to be seven dice. So there are there is no um, tension involved in the roll, even though there's tension involved in the scene. It's a flashback. Sure. We know you've survived. Uh, so you just roll those 76. And for every four, five, or six, you regain a spark. Two spark. Uh, I see three. Oh, I read that six is a two for no good reason. <laughs> so you're up to seven spark uh, from yeah. that memory. And yeah, so you just take them out with your BFG. Sweet. And Toads. then, yeah, after the, like, the third uh, of the missiles, the fourth one's coming close. Uh, and Oh no, oh no, does she have four shots? And then just right in front of you, you fire the last one and it explodes and the very next panel is like the flash forward to now. And you see- I have to do like the flip rack. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, totally see that. See the flip rack, uh, very, very Schwarzenegger from T2. I love it, it's the best. Uh, and when we jump forward again, you see those four missiles, dog. What do you do? I mean, it ain't broke, so I ain't gonna fix it. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, you will be not rolling with heart this time. Uh, you're gonna be rolling same setup, except probably tools, right? With your BFG. Yeah. Is yeah. this um? Is this a thing where they've seen your BFG before? Have you used this in previous? altercations hmm i mean if i haven't used it in altercations with this team i've still used it enough since i've gotten to earth that i think that it's it's not people who know dog they know it's easy to assume that they know that the bfg I mean, exists or exists head they might I mean, not have seen it before. i can definitely picture a scene where we've been like okay, Brutus is going to have to do something with science because we can't possibly do something with what we're going to do. And then Dog brings out the... Yeah. Like, yeah. Done. Yep. And Dog's oh, just like, mm, oh, door big, huh? <laughs> I don't think that's the onomatopoeia we use. <laughs> Same, but I don't really feel like making other gun onomatopoeia right now. <laughs> Blood down. Sorry. Blood okay. Slam. <laughs> Explode <laughs> noise. <laughs> Crack a coom. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I'll stop. Yeah, I was, I was actually going to say. <laughs> Crack <-oom>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Crack is good. So uh, I feel like, uh, let's see. Yeah, you're being a brick. You're being super here. Uh -huh. I think you're using tools. So that's a base of six. You think you're highly trained, uh, pays off here i think so surprised if you didn't think that so eight and uh and then are there any spark you want to use oh you might want to know what it's going to take so it's going to take this um the difficulty is a four but for every success you get one of the missiles is taken out gotcha and after four successes i'll spend two spark okay so that's 10 dice you're rolling. Pretty good Feel. chance. I think you're going to be great. I feel like this is worth pushing it out. Okay, one, two, three, four, five successes. 
And an oof, which I think means I lose a spark. Yep, tension was definitely involved in the roll. Five successes means that you are able to handily take out the missiles. What do you think? Is, well, does it I look keep any... flip rack like I used to? <laughs> oh, okay. Is that the thing that's a little different, or is it? Do you go through the same sets of motions very practiced? Like, is it almost old dog is doing what? What newer dog? <laughs> Young dog used to do. Uh, yeah, I think that a lot of it is the very same motions uh and instead of flip racking and maybe i even try it and i'm like oh fuck so i have to i have to like put my gun into some kind of like hook on the bike to have that be an assist racking sort of situation nice uh, so we come back because uh, I need at least one hand occupied on the bike. That that's only logical. I mean, why would you take off both hands from a bike? It could get away from you. That sounds very dangerous. It's extremely bad. I, I only did it a couple of times when I was younger, and uh, my balance isn't what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the center ear thing. Uh, <laughs> poor dog. Sweet. So we cut back to, if I remember, Brutus, you were driving. Were you not? Or am I misremembering? Yeah, I was driving. Yeah, you just see missiles. Then you see dogs shoot all four of the missiles and just continue and, on. And I don't press the button. So <laughs> the drone, I have not released the drones. That's right. You didn't have to release the drones. That's but, fine. But evidently, you're not welcome here, Brutus. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, what do you, and if I remember Raphael and Golden Boy, the two of you were in the car with Brutus. Who's in the back? I imagine that not all three of you are crammed in the front seat. Wasn't it a truck? Was it a it's truck? A sedan. It's a sedan. <laughs> oh, I thought you had it with a, where you threw bikes in the back of the truck or something. Oh, no, you have a rack. No. I have a rack. That's right. Um, I, I imagine I'm in rack. the back seat. That would stand to reason. I would have looked at Raphael and said, uh, age before beauty, Raph, and let him be shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> I would have okay. taken that with a wry smile. And, but yes, I would have accepted the front seat. Uh, but I'm slowing a bit because, I mean, there's somebody there who shoots missiles at people, which is not very safe and is against... Um, I think it might be a violation. Yeah, like I assume that there's some kind of comms or something. I feel like Brutus mm -hmm. wouldn't oh, let yeah. us yeah. go yeah. without being mic'd up in some way. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. The I dog think... would be like, mm, they were rolling out the red carpet. Uh, yeah, they I think Sorry. yes. They so might I... know we're here. <laughs> Did you any sure? of you ever meet the red carpet? That she was a terrible ham. Um, sorry. Um, it wasn't too bad. I always forget she existed. <laughs> that she would be mortally wounded by that. Mm. It hurts, but she's got to get stronger. <laughs> I'm gonna forget her again. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I. One recommend us getting inside before any more of those uh, rocket doohickeys rain from the sky. Yeah, fair enough. I'll send out a drone anyway, just to have a look around. Cool. So, so this you're... is a different drone. So All right. Turn some some dial and then press the lever and then um, out from I think the the luggage thing the boot 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 comes a, a little drone mm -hmm. like it's not very big and it doesn't look it looks like basically it looks like a normal drone it's not very super sciencey or anything it's maybe it is just a normal drone and i'll hand my phone to Raphael and uh, tell him which buttons to click so we can see the the video is there a big red button on the dashboard that says drone no there's no big red button on my. I made that in mistake the in the. I made that mistake in the seventies. I will yeah. never ever use big red. Buttons. If you name all your things, your enemies can use them. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. 
I, I was very upset when he changed the, the numbers <laughs> and code. Sweet. Cool. And so now the, the button that says safety shut off is actually the self destruct. <laughs> Take that, a, heroes. I know a guy who made that mistake. <laughs> he forgot in a moment of passion and self-destructed himself. Oh, this is the best. That's the best. I have so many Dr. Doofenshmirtz thoughts. Um, let's, let's see here. So you're, you're throwing out a drone, and the intent is you're trying to guide you guys to safety so that you can arrive at the silo without any further problems, yeah. right? You're trying to play lookout. Cool. So you're using a drone. Good news is yeah. tension isn't involved in the role. If you fail, nice. your drone gets blown up. That's too uh, bad, but that's a drone. It's not sentient or anything. That's right. It's just a drone. It's not a Star Wars drone. It's not a Star Wars drone. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> that would be super old. Uh, let's say your difficulty to do this is good. Okay. Can I do this with normal? Because it's... it's not yeah, it's a normal drone. Super drone. It's a normal totally. drone. We're in the 21st century. Um, it is a tool, I imagine. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely a tool. And I think you're being strategic. And I'm being strategic, so that's seven dice. I don't know if my gadgetry comes in here because it might. I think it, I think it is. I think, I think you're using your gadgetry here. You've got that drone. You made it yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah, okay. Then it's nine, right? Ah, it sure is. I don't. Then I don't need three, three, four, fives, or sixes. Three, three. Then I don't need to spend any spark. I guess. Hopefully. We'll see. Oh well. Ha <laughs> ha. That is a, that is not the best roll. In yeah, fact, it's that not is a terrible roll. Nine dice with three successes on a fifty-fifty yeah, well. shot. So okay. you send your drone up, and um, it evidently did its job because it drew away the searing laser that slices it out of the air um so that's a thing that evidently they have yeah and i say they have lasers Asian. who's using laser who's using lasers nowadays that's so old school so this is laser proof the sedan yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah it is good <laughs> of course it is i mean more proof and against and that's when you get to find out as we do the little like you know bright light shining at the panel type deal and we see a searing laser starting to slice towards dog you and your uh and your bike and then brutus and your sedan uh so I'd like brutus, to do something what would you like to do golden boy as we see the laser come slicing is it one laser that's sweeping across the yes. both of us? Yep, it's totally a, like a searing laser kind of deal. All right, I'm going to, and you set a sedan, so that works for me. Um, eh, eh, I got this one. And uh, I'll open up the back door and we'll see me kind of put my feet out and oh, 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 hold on to the door for a second. And, uh, and start moving forward quickly and rushing forward in front of the bike. Um, slowly light, golden light beginning to shine up uh, around me. And I leap up and I'm trying to catch the laser full on and transmit it from uh, into a less, diffuse it down into a less problematic bit of light. Can I help a little bit? How would you help? I think I, I would say like, yes. Just like out of the wind is like, you've still got it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Go ahead and uh, yeah. kick a spark into the die roll for Golden Boy. Yeah. It seems pretty. Do you think you're I mean, being wild? I'm not helping. You also want to help? I'm just shaking my head. and No, I'm just shaking my head and say, I always forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Dog would give him a whistle. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, that that fingers and mouth really loud whistle that I don't oh, know how yeah. to do. Yeah, the sharp shrill thing that like mm -hmm. scares dogs and stuff. I love it. So that's two. So I'll kick another. Yeah, two help in. coming towards uh, Golden Boy as you build it. Do you feel that you're fulfilling your team role as the wild one here? This seems pretty wild. 
Ooh, I would agree. So now you're at three dice. You're definitely being super. That'll kick you up to six. Which stat do you feel like he's leaning towards here? I'm it's gonna, not really about him running. I'm going to argue that it's, it's hard because I'm trying to protect people. I buy it. So then you are up to nine dice. You're using, sounds like you actually worked in your super movement and controlling light. Holy crap, look at you. You're now at 13 dice. Do you get to use both? Can you? If you can work it into the narration and they're both Ooh. necessary, I think so. I don't yeah. think I'd realize that. Wow. Okay, so how many? I don't actually say it in the rules because I want to see if clever players will try to do it. Huh. Uh, so it's a pretty remarkable thing and tension is involved in the rule oh then it's gonna kill me how many dice did you say <laughs> you're up to 13 oh then yeah i'm definitely gonna end up getting killed by this all right rolling the dice you're very eric idol you know he's like boom oh, i'm tired well, I rolled very well, but I did get three ones. As oh, man, that's awesome. Be. Man, look One, at two, all those three, four, fours, five, fives, and sixes. Six, seven, eight. Eight successes. Wow. Now, what does this yeah. look like? I'm, I mean, oh, this is this is super duper. This is our, like, two-page spread here. Like, we open it up to Golden Boy showing us what's what. Yeah, so I, I think we get that kind of slow start off of him having to be pulled by the car before he gets enough speed to start heading off. And we could kind of see Marty as the gold is shaping up around him running. And we can we get a close up of the sweat coming down his face before the gold comes up around it. And as he reaches where the laser beam is coming in, he leaps up and we get the golden arch of his leap up to intercept it. And then we get a nice big splash page of the light hitting him full in the chest, the beam hitting full in the chest, and just whoosh and prismaticing off of him. So it just uh, just splits into all the different spectrum as it hits across him. And he sort of whoosh, and drops down and eh, eh, whew. Yeah, I think your I think your chest is thumping hard, but you you took care of it, and there are no more searing lasers. Like, that That was done. You definitely, you guys see no more attacking, no more attacks, no more missiles, no more lasers, no more defense system that seems to be active outside of the silo. In fact, there's like a, a shot of it, and then just tumbleweed. Yeah. Dog swings by to pull Marty up and onto the bike. Nice. <sighs> Thanks, dog. Good shot. And, and, and I'll reach in and I, I pull out, you see the vitamin bottle, and then I sort of put it back in and you could probably, we might even get the close up on the bottom nitroglycerin as I put one under my tongue and slide it back into my pocket. You're probably too close for him to use more missiles, so we just got to get in there before those lasers recharge. Yeah. Whew. Uh, I gotta tell you, he really is not looking forward to some visitors coming. I, for one, look forward to meeting him. Ooh. That, that's a little intimidating. I love it. Are you okay doing okay, Marty? With your butt pressure, I mean? Uh, little twinge, little twinge right now, but, uh... Yeah. Oh, give, just give me a minute. Just gotta, gotta get my wind. Get my wind. Cool. Okay, cool. I mean, you've been hitting your back. Can't be far from your top speeds from back in the day. Oh. That was some that was fancy footwork. Oh, Ray, if you're just trying to flatter me now. No, I forgot you did the light thing. I haven't seen something like that in a well. I'm pretty glad I didn't meet you uh, in the 70s, I guess. Back in the disco gold days, I called that the disco ball. 
Cool. Uh, that is that is a brilliant refresh. Uh, Golden Boy, take three spark back from everybody pumping you back up. That's that's just delightful. Good work. So we pick up with all four of you outside of car and what is dog? Does dog just kind of leave the bike behind kind of deal? I don't imagine is a pocket rocket kind of you can't pack it up with you. No, no, it's it's got to be out there with the car. I set some kind of security protocol on a little touch screen on the uh, on the surface where you would say that it's the fuel tank, but this ain't that kind of bike, so it's probably not. Viper alarm active. Good boy. Probably the most dangerous thing amongst us all. <laughs> so wait, just send the bike. Just sit the bike. I'm tired. Uh, cool. <laughs> so it's you know, standing, looming above you is this huge missile silo, um, and there's there's a door, of course. Um, is, there, is there a doorbell? Is there a doorbell? There is not. There is not. I a doorbell. kick the door very hard. Sweet. Next thing we see, we see like <laughs> dogs starting to kick, and then we see door coming forward, yeah. and like the perspective looking like out into the blue sky with. <laughs> with big dog and foot coming. Yeah, I think Raphael would be like, hand just about to knock. <laughs> but the door like kicks in before he can make the contact. Yeah. That is perfect. <laughs> so just I'm ladies getting, first. I'm getting my electromagnetic screwdriver and following them. Yeah. What about, I follow behind dog. What, what about Peacock? Does he have like, does he just look like regular old guy, or is he suited up in any way? Um, no, he's got his walking stick and he's got his scarf. Nice. It's, it's not like wrapped around his neck; it's more just like draped over the shoulders. Like, I love that scarf. Yes. Yeah, that's super dope. Nice. Cool. I may have a smoke, some smoke pellets. Hopefully, they haven't gone off. <laughs> They're a little old, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they might just go <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> you throw it, it like just drops on the ground. It's all hardened because it, it expires in 1984. Yeah. Uh, sweet. So, um, yeah, you guys look in and the missile silo itself, like there's a bunch of dust on what looks like a pair of, you know, the, the doors for the missile silo itself. And you see all the rust um, and there are a bunch of lattice work of uh, ladders and a few broken now catwalks that kind of ran rings around it where people could come out and doctor whatever missile was loaded up here in the bay. Uh, and everything looks rusted and uh, it's, it's, it's really just ruined. This was obviously discarded many decades ago. Uh, but but there were lasers and missiles, so obviously that's some kind of... There's, there's something that's been worked or touched upon recently. Can I get a feel for the electrical energies that run through this place? All right. Yeah, you can get a feel for that. You're trying to sense where electricity is going and flowing? Yeah, I mean, I pretend to look at my phone for that just so it doesn't look like I'm doing... Wait, I'm with these old cartridges. I don't need to pretend. I can just uh, just uh, reach out a hand and uh, grab a little bit of electricity and connect with that. So, nice. Uh, yeah. Let's put it in no tension involved. Typical, typical role. Okay. So I think uh, I'll do control electricity. That's two. Super, that's three. Um probably strategic so that's four can i use hot head yeah totally so that's seven that's fine how many do i need you only need two successes intention is not involved in this role huh yeah i thought that the last time i'm using spark all right now you're going to get like 46 successes no i've got four successes that's okay, okay. four 446. What's who's counting? Oh, wait, where are yeah. you counting? Sweet. Um, you wait, is four and 46 the same thing? Because then I could have 46 spark now. You could, <laughs> but you're 
but but we should probably go with actual math. Okay. Now, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm the one who screwed us up there. Uh, you feel the electricity. Um, it heads towards what in the in the corner. It kind of there's an area that evidently has a, a smaller, like a oh, like a manhole cover, but it's camouflaged pretty well. Um, and obviously, there's there's a strong electrical pull down that Jeffrey's tube or whatever that you want to call it evidently it's a subterranean layer underground layer it is and i point at the manhole cover and the, the entrance is over there figures typical mm. oh i haven't seen one oh, of these in a while are there any cameras here because they would have needed electricity and oh would have great fried. great point and then yes. i can fry them because i mean that's fine with that many successes you fry the three cameras that were watching mm. you guys oh and there were three cameras but they're they are they need a repair right now <sighs> well we didn't have the element of surprise anyway so yep. <laughs> oh. all right hope you're wearing your dry boots I'll like unhitch a crowbar off of my belt and get the manhole cover up. Pop that open, and you see there are very bright lights. Uh, and there's a the ladder itself looks like it's newer metallic uh, design, very sixties. Like there's definitely like mm -hmm. a, a bright white kind of seventies mod sci-fi going on down here. Uh, as you guys head down the ladder and Oof. there are there are these like recessed lights along the left and, and right hand side, no overhead lights, it's just like ambient recessed lights that, that kind of cause this tunnel to glow. And, Boy, uh, he's done a whole lot of renovations. There's a little look. We're not doing map combat, but I thought this was a cool kind of look for everything so we'll just imagine that you're heading through these these spaces uh for a bit nice housekeeping sweet so as you announce your presence we'll say that around um area two the door opens and you see three of those golden robots the lady trons three of them you've seen before. You are not on the guest list. Dr. Warp has asked us to make sure that you leave. Hmm. Oh, excuse me, we would like to talk to Dr. Warp and I'm pretty sure he would like to talk to us. Do we want to keep these ones intact, uh, Emory? Um, I just, I just want to talk to this Dr. Warp. Maybe we can explain to him that his ways are wrong-headed and that he maybe should go into, I don't know, inventing, uh, using these for, I mean, housekeeping. That would be amazing. Have you seen the old people's home? We are far more advanced for housekeeping. We hope to renovate this entire structure. See, they are perfect for an old people's home. Now, maybe it'll finally be ADA compliant. Yeah. <laughs> What's an ADA? Americans with Disabilities Act. Read a book. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so were you? No, sorry. Br Brutus. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, no. No. Really, Captain, I insist. The. The. <laughs> Not Captain. Now, dear ladies, is it okay if we just walk by? No fuss? We've uh, already had a, quite a bit of adventure today, so. Oh, let's see if, if the peacock is charming enough. El Pavo Real. Uh, if he is charming enough to talk his way past the golden robots, the Lady Trons. Okay. I'm going to say some tension is involved in this role because they are they have been told to expel you. Um, I don't think any of these powers are going to be, but 
No, and I think Joel, actually, being pretty normal, you're using Joel, your normal and con artist. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we'll say that's, that it's a uh, good difficulty. These these lady so, trons were not really built for witty conversation or repartee. Yeah. Uh, and we start with we start with one, and then we build up. No, we it? we don't we don't start with. Oh, no. Okay, just checking. Yeah, that's for that's for yeah. uh, others. I, I would like to help. I can. I don't have a lot of spark, but I'll I'll hand off one uh, as uh, I'll kind of get behind him and give a little golden corona around him of light. But I I definitely kind of do the turn my head and try and kind of get the glint of light off his shiny white teeth that are probably not the original shiny white teeth. I really um, try not to roll my eyes. I just really, uh, so oh, sorry, I want to step back before we get too far. Jen, did you take one spark of damage for dog in your last roll? I did. You should not have. You have the oh. defense power and, and... and that means you can ignore one spark of damage any anytime it's always active, so absorbed it like a tough it was, ass yes exactly okay, um, it was it was cosmetic damage that is gone now if you want i'm gonna spend one spark just to, okay uh, okay so that gives me eight and i'm gonna roll uh, um one two three four successes and Three ones. Hmm. So you is that some good news to go? <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that, that, that's less than good news. I did say yeah. tension was involved in the role, so I think I think this is what it's at. <laughs> you, know, you 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 talk about that, and the the uh, the three lady trons look at each other. We kind of had specific orders to repel invaders. Yeah, but he's really old, and you know. Broken. Look, he has a cane. It's fine. Go ahead, old guy. What? What's the steps? Do you need some help? I can help you. I'm very stable. I try and pretend them as best I can to ignore these comments, like I didn't hear them. I'm like, shall we go? <clears throat> and I walk past, head up, held high. <laughs> oh, but the With arrow my cane sting. tapping as I go. They sting. They sting. And yeah, uh, the it's... robot's mockery for some reason gets to you. And you take some spark damage to that. Mm. So, how much was that? Oh, the... You roll three ones. So, uh, you do have defensive deflection. So, I think your head held high is how you deflect one of those, but the others <laughs> do come through. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's stung. So. But. I so try and two take it with dignity. That you take. It would have been three, but because of your defense, mm. it is only two. Uh, cool. So you guys head through the um, main security door, and yes, you do have to go um, all the way down uh, oh to. My. I will whisper to uh, Raphael, like, they are lying. They're not very stable. We kicked one over, remember? We don't know anything about this. We're not that old. We got moves. Yeah, you do. Like, uh, you're distinguished. You're not old. Distinguished is the word. I will be talked down to Emory. And thank you. Sweet. So we'll say three spark back for the two of you. Boosting and booing each other up there. Good job. I appreciate it. You say three or two? Uh, I believe I said three. If I accidentally said two, I meant three. Or okay, both of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, if if it's like a banter where you're both bolstering each other up, then everybody can re then, then all parties can mm -hmm. regain. Spark, but if everybody's kind of focusing on one person, then that's the person that gets the benefit, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm definitely now striding ahead with holding my dignity tightly. You stride ahead, and then yeah. you get to the circular staircase at the bottom, at, at the middle of the... <clears throat> 
the the spherical area where you are and you have to go down uh, several levels oh i i'm really struggling to hold in my kind of grunts as we make the go down yep and then you end up in this area and i actually will share screen just to make sure that we're all on the same page so you eventually come down here there are doors to <clears throat> the radio antenna water tank and uh area 15 which is our launch room and the actual <clears throat> the main where the missile storage is uh you will come to area 14 uh, heading through that door and when you come to that point, sorry, I have a, uh, sorry, I'm a little so heavy on the show and tell, but, um, oh, there was a side cut and I, I'm sorry, this, this thrills me. So I'm going to, I'm going to make you look at it. There you go. There's a side cut. So this is what it looks like, right? So you, you came down these sets of stairs and then you have to go down the, all the way down to the uh, sub basement too. Um, but when you get down to the bottom area, <clears throat> Sorry for a second. I have one last picture to show because I thought it was delightful and it is not on that page. Give me a sec. You find Dr. Warp. And if you guys remember, there was someone that your um, Lady Tron that you spoke with had referred to. Uh, she called she referred to someone known as the platinum bombshell. And when you guys get down to this area of the radio control, here we go. Here's my picture. You see that Dr. Warp is standing. He's got a few of the Ladytrons with him and he also has a last robot and I'll show you that picture and then I'll be done with pictures. I mostly promise. Uh, that last one is a silvery uh, metallic quasi female lady Tron. She is uh, on a table. Like it looks as if she has been constructed her eyes are not a light. She appears inert. Uh, and the Lady Trons are all assisting Dr. Warp. But um, he turns when the four of you enter because he wants to dramatically address you. I see. I have visitors. Very well. Ah, welcome. You, you've come to watch the unveiling of my greatest of all automated assistance Raphael is just nodding along he's you know let the speech happen it's and yeah sure and he stops and he peers mm. at you Raphael and then over to you golden boy hi of you look oddly familiar do you have any young children who who are heroes of any kind why yes i do I could show you some photos later, but I oh. think we've got a, some business first. Be careful, man. Photo time takes a while. What I have built here is the platinum bombshell. She has mm -hmm. photon blasts, ablative force field armor. She has the ability to fly. And she is here to bring people peace through superior defenses and offensive capabilities. Um, well, how's that work exactly? You see, I've Badly. come to this, this weird apocalyptic future of yours. And I've found that all that I feared has come to pass. It's no 1968! That's that's when I, your your children, evidently, we, we tasseled. But uh, I came here and I found that everything has gone to, to pot, if you pardon my French. So I quickly got to work 
creating the platinum bombshell. All I need, I've sent one of my Ladytrons after for the final part, a, a simple PQ38 modulator. Uh, <clears throat> and if I'm able to install that, then the platinum bombshell will be complete and we will be able to bring peace finally to America. All those people, the World Summit will understand that they they misconstrued my desires for generally female-oriented robot superiority to bring us peace and, and prosperity. Is this like that thing where everybody wants a nuke so that they don't nuke each other? Except we have the super nuke. He gestures to the platinum bombshell. She also has the capability to network throughout the rest of the Ladytrons to utilize them in a, in a mesh network. A mesh network is where we have uh, not one central point of, do you guys understand a mesh network? I could explain it. Perhaps there's some, I have some charts. I have, he, he walks over. To I always let control. my, let uh, my friend uh, Brutus do text. But that's, that's, that's too complicated for us, I'm afraid. Um, but you know that module, I think that's a bit out of, outdated. Nobody uses a double time modulator like this anymore. Turns and looks at you. Ah, fellow scientist. Oh, barely, I'm just a dabbler. Well, if you understand modulators, perhaps you will understand a bit more of my work. What would you recommend? What's your name again? I'm Dr. Oh. Dr. Warp. Oh, oh I'm, um, I'm Brutus. That's my name. How Roman. My father thought I'd be a boxer. Um, can I take a look? I think I have an idea. Sure. I'm very proud of my work. This has taken at least three months of my time. Hmm. Yeah. Three That's months? Cool. That's pretty impressive. Oh, thank you. The Lady Trons assist me in these days. That's why I tell you the peace of prosperity. They are so productive. Thanks, boss! It, don't you think think that they might be more effective in a peace-oriented means than like uh, going around and beating people into peacefulness? Peace through strength! Oh, see, that's kind of outdated. Hmm. I don't remember it going so well last time, last test run. Nah, Kissinger is way out of style these days. Listen, fellows, you seem to know a lot about what your sons and I have been mixed up in. And I agree. Back in 1968, Dr. Hyoma swore uh, we, we had some refinements to make. And while I've only been here in your apocalyptic future for a few short months, I've been able to ascertain that well, pretty much every part of the American dream is taking a dying crap in the bed. No arguments here. Yeah. You know so, what? Still got running water, though. Mm, Most places. Sure that, that Depends on where you water. are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Brutus, Brutus, see, and he like opens up the the carapace of the platinum bombshell, and uh, he starts pointing out all the various, like you see he's still got like a motherboard. And this is pretty old tech. It's really nifty. But I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. it, it would have been cool 50 years ago, been I think. Cool in like the mid 70s for sure. Yeah, I will sabotage he's it. He's at least seven years ahead of his own time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, so you're going to sabotage it? That's, that's of course. pretty wild. I mean, I mean, that, that can't be too hard. I mean, it's missing a part, and he's pointing out where the part is missing, so I'll just uh, use the electric magnetic, electric man magnetic screwdriver um, to fix her. Oops. So here's the, the good news is, you have successfully fooled Dr. Warp, and given time, you could easily sabotage the platinum bombshell. The bad news is, 
platinum bombshell as you start this action, you realize she did not need the PQ-38 modulator and is fully active. Oh. Oops. So <laughs> that's, that's what you realize as you start to reach in, her little eyes flicker on, and then all of the Lady Trons around, they all kind of jerk for a moment, and their eyes, which were, if I remember correctly, uh, glowing like a, a nice kind of bright white, they turn red, which, Oops. of course, we know means bad, bad things. They're, they're bad. Uh, so the platinum bombshell reaches up and grabs your wrist. And can I? Not, yeah. Can I? Uh, seeing the activation start happening, mm -hmm. can I use my defense deflection to help somebody else? Yeah. So helping other people will be spending spark, but you can use the the fact that you're really good at defense mm. to say this is why I'm using the spark. That's a good because I, I I think you know doing the flick out with my um, mm -hmm. my. Uh, Scarf around the wrist. Nice. Okay, cool. So there are, um, if, if we remember, there are four of the Lady Trons uh, and then one Platinum Bombshell and one very surprised Dr. Warp as he declares, oh, she's alive! She, she's alive! I guess you were right about the modulator. And, uh, and then the Lady Trons are now going to come forward to try to hurt the three of you while the Platinum Bombshell uh, locks eyes with you. And, and you do actually like snap onto her wrist. Um, mm. So uh, she says, Dr. Warp has only brought forth your doom! Gosh. Yeah. Uh, let's start off with Golden Boy, because you're the speedster anyway. You'd be the first to react to this. There, Lady Warp, you, mm -hmm. Warp, you haven't uh, upgraded your override systems, have you, by chance? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, your son really messed that up. Can you shut them down? Why would I do that? They're going. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it, I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. Uh, um, <laughs> so, Doc, as Golden Boy is having a conversation with Dr. Warp, um, what are you doing? I mean, I'm tearing up one, the first one that comes near me. Sweet. Yeah, there's a Laytron that's coming forward. And, uh, I'm very sorry I have to destroy you. You don't have to have regrets. Crowbar comes down. Nice. So defeating this, defeating a Lady Tron on an individual fight, tension is involved and it's a remarkable feat. All right. Cool beans. This seems pretty bricky. I agree. And kind of handsy. A golden automaton. I think that's super. Yeah, same. I think highly trained comes into play here. I so let's see. Agree. Which that's data? nine dice. It sounds like you were you shooting, so using tools. No, I'm. I'm using Punch. the crowbar. Nice. Do you think you're yep. going for hands, basically, effectively? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm into that. So then seven, eight, nine, nine dice without spending any spark. You guys are so low on spark. I sh should have suggested more refresh for dog. It is what it is. What we got here. Oof. Well, one, two, three, four, five successes. Now lose one spark in the tussle. That's right one spark in the tussle because your def defense helps. Uh, so I think it's, it's like pure on violence, right? This isn't a thing where you, you lost spark like Raphael did. I think it's just a thing of you've gotten a, in a fight with an Android and she is very strong. I think she mm -hmm. slams you back against the control 
you know, it's one of those like big control areas, like the giant knobs and 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 buttons and gauges and all that stuff. And you get slammed into it, but then you crowbar one more time and she falls and says, Oh, oh what a what a world. <laughs> uh cool so platinum bombshell will flash back to platinum bombshell who you have her wrist Raphael. Mm-hmm. she tried to grab for brutus uh you've got that with your scarf yeah i huh. would try and like pull, i i want because no i first like excuse me do you happen to have one of those Proton blast in that hand. I have proton blasts in both hands. Excellent. And then I would try and like pull up her arm as it's, I'm assuming, charging up to blast into the direction of another one of the standard lady drums. Yes. Yeah, like, okay, that sounds amazing. You're gonna try to uh, bust it up. So I think making her shoot another one would be again a remarkable feat but mm-hmm. then it would utterly take out destroy one of the lady trons so mm-hmm. let's build that role this sounds cool is this a con artist because i'm kind of tricking their own thing it's yeah. a stretch but since you did the like setup and this is the payoff i'm into her being conned into shooting her own person so yes okay Definitely. this is being super you are sadly, being, yeah, sadly for you. Uh, it seems like tools because you're using your scarf, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say hands, but it's yeah. Yeah. I course. mean, I could see. I, I could mean, see his hands because it's of tools. Your, your dexterity. So I'm cool with that. So I'm up to five. You're up to five, and um, highly trained. I think so. Yeah, you've got to have just the right maneuver here. Your defense will kick in in case you lose spark. So you're yeah. now up to seven. You need four successes. Nice. Seven. I thought it was just six. Uh, team roll, B super, three, five, two more, seven. Okay, cool. I'm not going to play. Uh, and I'll, what's the target? Target is four. I think I've got quite. I've got a fair bit of spark. I'm going to spend two. Okay. So now you're rolling nine dice, looking for f- four successes. And tension is involved in the roll. Mm. It's, it's a few ones. I got the successes. Nice. So you, you <laughs> blah, 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 as the proton just slices right past Brutus in the last perfect timing. You redirect it, and I think it's one of the Lady Trons that was coming up towards Golden Boy. And uh, gets shot in the back. Blah, blah, blah. And it reminds you of getting shot in the back, right, Golden Boy? The time when you were you're hit by one of them and it falls to its knees and then poof, and they're, when they get and their red glowing eyes go out. So yeah. I got three. three. Yeah, so I two. Think three successes. Uh two is what you take. So I think what happens is you, you redirect it and then she just cuffs you really hard. You go flying whoa, and slam into the ground. <sighs> I have files on you, Emery. I will keep you around, but these others must die. Please stand to the side. Um, I'm so I'm still in front of her, right? And I, she's still open. Mm-hmm. I think I can still uh, take something that should not have a lot of electricity in it and just uh, basically electrocute her a little overcharge her because i mean and i will use my um my screwdriver for this because that is a focus for me to just uh, not not just electrocute this but electrocute it really really precisely because i need to hit a certain spot and then melt it down so i will i'm, I'm being super so that doesn't help I don't know if I'm I'm being strategic here, right? I because think, I think so. Yeah, I mean, like maybe we even have the thought cloud of like, if only I can electrocute her from the inside. This is my one chance. Yeah, um, I have two then, 
And I think I can use my tools here. I agree. Then I have five. And I use my gadgets and my control electricity. And I have nine. And seven. Oh, it's and nine. Five will, and two and two. Yes. Yeah, then uh, I will, and I will use um, three spark because why not? Well, hold on. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you the oh. difficulty. So okay. platinum bombshell is what we call uh, the big bad here, mm -hmm. which means that um, it's a total threat difficulty for mm -hmm. this opponent. The good news is that you will move that, that difficulty will go down mm -hmm. with subsequent attacks, but her total difficulty to be taken down, she is a monstrous uh, oh. foe. So it is seven, seven is the difficulty and you, Tinchi is definitely involved in this role. Okay. But also, even if you don't roll any ones, if you haven't beaten that total threat mm -hmm. difficulty, every roll has a little bit of uh, escalation uh, to the danger mm -hmm. involved in it. So uh, with that in mind, um, okay. you're going to spend three spark to bring yourself up to 10 dice. I spent, th I, have I had nine before. Oh yeah, so nine. So three, I make a 12. Thank you for helping me with simple math because I... <laughs> And that, yeah, that's why I'm the mad scientist. And they call 46. me mad. They, mad. They call me mad. <laughs> okay. So I'll try my, my luck at, uh, at getting her. Oh, well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, my God. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh man, gold blue, you're oh, too I slow. take one spark of damage. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you do take one spark of damage. I think it's just, um, I, th I think there's like a small explosion inside her, right? It's just, yeah, and I fly a bit, and that, 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 my age flying around in the room is not good. That's a literal not good. spark of damage. Nice, nice. <laughs> not um, as fun as it used to be, and it uh, wasn't that fun in the first place. It was never any fun. At least not for me. Sweet. And, and Golden Boy, you were facing, there were four, right? One was taken down by a dog. One was taken down by Peacock, uh, shooting it in the back, which meant that there were two more. And I think they were facing you, Golden Boy. And you were holding your own, right? You were like, you were doing this fight sequence that was in the back of the panel for a couple of these things that were going on. Um, and, and all of a sudden, after the explosion, they say, Oh, hello, would you like some tea? And their tea. red eyes, their red tea. eyes turn white again. Tea, yes. Yes, tea, please. Oh, good, I hope you like Tuttley. No lumps. Nice. Two lumps, I like sugar. That's awesome, cool. And with that, we reached the full. Three. Uh, <laughs> We reach the the staples, right? We're at the fold at the midpoint. Let's take our bio break. It's five minutes till. Take like ten minutes. We'll meet back at five after and figure out. Sounds how good. To wrap up. Okay. See you guys in a bit. Oh wait, I can pause. Cool, and we're back. So uh, the shattered remains of platinum bombshell lays at the wreckage of the operating table. Dr. Warp is on his knees crying over the detritus of his one-of-a-kind uh, Ladytron Ultra, Ultra Mega Maximus version. And, uh, and yeah, you guys are, are there. He's, he's, he's not inconsolable, but he's definitely pretty rough. <laughs> I think I would limp, I would limp over fairly slowly and then like just pat him on the shoulder and they're there old chap look warp uh, you build something bigger to fight someone's always gonna come along to fight it you, you could do so much more good by helping people with these look, look what you built in no amount of time it the way to peace is by providing for folks. Oh, thank you. I take the tea. <laughs> nice. 
I totally want to see that as a, a dog like role. sips her tea. <laughs> oh, yes, pinky up. I did not know if dog was a pinky up kind of gal. Uh, I definitely want to see Golden Boy see if he can help Doctor Warp turn his life around and find a new focus with his generally feminine robot superiority plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's build this. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a remarkable feat for okay. you. What is your can I help? Yeah. If you guys all, anyone who wants to pitch in, you can throw yeah. in a spark. And if you're like, no, I'm willing to accept any odd responsibilities, you can do more than one spark. That's called going all in. You don't have to spend all your spark, but that's the phrase for it. No, I would just spend a spark, struggle to my feet because I fell and say, look, uh, <sighs> these things, they never work. Hey, I've, I've seen super villains go, come and go, and this never works. What really works is playing the system, right? Make money, buy things, and by supporting the right people, ensure peace. It doesn't work like I send out my robot squad. Trust me, I've seen that. And Somebody always shows up and stops you, and I look at uh, Peacock. I think I found a chair by now, and I'm like, I just nod as I'm rubbing my knee. <laughs> and you can get one spark from me, Tyler. Thanks. Perfect. Um, well, it, I, I don't know if wild one really applies to this. I think you're, you're suggesting be the opposite of wild, sadly. Yeah, maybe a bit radical, but still not wild. Um, and it's normal. Yeah. But heart. Uh, at least you're good at heart. But heart. So yeah, there's four three. to start off. One from Cyclist takes you up to five. Oh, man. That's a hard this one. Rug. Oh, man. This was this difficulty may be too much. Dr. Warp may not be reachable at this moment. Nope. Controlling the light side? <laughs> In a kind of metaphorical sense. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could pull that <laughs> in. <laughs> All right. All right. Rolling five. It's possible, but not likely. We'll see how it goes. There is no tension involved in the roll. I got two. Two successes, he says. <sighs> yeah. You're probably right. I, I'll have to go back to the literal drawing board. You should tell your grandson or whatever these words of wisdom. He, he just ran in and tried to defeat me back then. Look, we'll see. I, I did have some Mattel. Were they destroyed in this modern apocalyptic age? That company, Mattel. Oh, um, company. Yeah, they, they, they. The, the toys and whatnot. They expressed some interest back in 1968. Perhaps I'll see if they will accept a new plan. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you apologize for the mess. Well, nobody could know that she would blow up. Did not build a self destruct on her. That once I learned from that mistake long ago. I so I guess I guess I better ask you all to leave now. I have some work to do. Do you have an escalator? Or an elevator? Oh, yes. Yeah, we have an elevator. Oh, oh thank God. I look at Brutus. Grumbles of relief also <laughs> yeah. from Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and Doctor, you head into the little secret elevator that one of the Lady Trons leads you to and she uh, operates it so that you guys um, head up. Before we go? Yes, before we go. He had a thing about this 
mesh, intelligence mesh thingy. Mm -hmm. I want to grab something of that I can access the frequency just to oh. see what he's doing, right? Yeah, no, totally, totally. You got that. I'm not even putting mm -hmm. it into a role. That's okay. just a, cool. that's just mm -hmm. a thing you can catch up uh, with Dr. Warp and whatever Dr. Warp is up to mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. yeah, there's some flung away part from the platinum bomb bombshell that you pick up off the floor and go, oh. Nice. Cool. So you make it up the elevator, uh, head out your sedan and motorcycles. Uh, vehicles are waiting for you as you guys start to get into your vehicles. You see there are a couple of black SUVs with government plates headed your way. <sighs> I don't think Warp's going to have the opportunity to make his pitch to the toy company. Probably not. Ever, everyone deserves a second chance. I mean, who hasn't done all but of lasers and whatnot? Well, and you might want to tell your boy about that. And sure enough, Hugo's stepping out of, he doesn't drive, right? He has people who do that for him. So he steps out of the front passenger mm -hmm. side. Dad, what are you doing here? It's all taken care of, you know? We've got... <laughs> He walks up and done. he like pulls you into a hug like he's been worried about you. But then when he pulls back, he like pulls your, your lapel a little bit to see if you've got a suit underneath underneath or something. And you know that's totally what he's doing. <laughs> I let that pass this. Yeah. Running around with these people again? That's what Palma people... exists for. This is our jobs. You guys did your good deeds back, way back in the day, Dad. Way I back. You. There's a difference between a job and a calling. I know. No, I, I respect your work. It's, it needs to be done. There's, of course, but I mean, Dogs like sidling into Raphael's line of sight and being like. <laughs> and I'm proud of that you do it. So well. I beep the horn a bit impatiently <laughs> for Raphael to join us. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I think Hugo like jumps a little bit. Uh, he, he fixes his bow tie. Thank you, Dad. I, honestly means a lot. I, I look back and like, Dr. Flux, don't make me come back there. Um, Get in the car, Captain. He has no respect for the name. I said to the Hugo. Hugo just kind of suddenly nods. I'll have gotten close to where Dog is and do, do we think that Flux deserves to not have to deal with these folks? Oh, I, think. Eh. I think he needs a dose of reality before his second chance. When you say Flux, did you mean Warp? Warp. Did I say Flux? Yeah, I yeah. just checked. Oh, I'm sorry. Flux. Yeah, Warp. Flux is warp. Yeah. 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 Before it went to press, the comic book says warp. I just want to. Gotcha. Right. Good, good, good. All these monosyllabic people. Yeah. I know. All these evil folks, you know, they are. I'll cast a look over at the Hulky sedan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. And kind of nod at Dog. I kept the glasses. He never meets these boys. Yeah. He's never going to know the stakes. Yeah, I, I, I catch all the glances that are passing around me and then just like... Go on, go go do something. Yeah, but, but go easy yeah. on the lad in there. I mean... I mean, in the old days, you know, gold robots. 
that was a plan. It's, you know. Guys, we've got an automaton problem. Like, oh, great, another one, okay. Yeah, this fella knows what year it is, but uh, seems like he forgot to apply math to other people. It's funny how dumb smart people can be sometimes. Okay, Dad, you and your friends go do regular citizen stuff, okay? We'll take care of this. I'm not going to go in there and find a bunch of rubble. You didn't destroy everything in there, did you? Uh, a couple robots. A door. A door. Uh, <laughs> There's almost like one one person, like you know, men in black, who's standing by the door wreckage there. Confirm on the door. I think that uh, operating table that's pretty much destroyed, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Three, four. Four Other things. Robots? That's about it. Uh, we only broke uh, three robots. Three. Ooh. A three. Right. Yeah. The right to big one. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got this, and I'll like punch you on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a beat, and then he reaches up and just kind of rubs his shoulder. See if Dad, I'll, I'll, I'll see you at family dinner, okay? You do that. She's using the Instapot. It's, it's really great. And then they're like heading inside the silo to leave you guys. I think I would like pass some of the, uh, as they pass, I probably some of the agents, I would like, you know, like Sam, Robert, Susan. After they go down, I'll look. Raph, your boy's kind of a douche. <laughs> I look to dog to see if <laughs> it's the suit, it's, it's the ties. They uh, are you I mean, coming? I'm, I'm, of course, in a suit as well, but I'm like <laughs> different kind of suits. Are you coming? Or are we? Oh, of course, don't hurry me. Diner, pancakes. Oh, yes, oh, pancakes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Coffee. As the we get on board and start driving away, I'll kind of, as my door, as I'm getting into the door, there's a golden blur, and I'll get in and close it. And as we drive away, probably no one notices, but the panel will probably shift back to where I flattened all of their tires. <laughs> Oh, while they were talking, I was totally getting my drone back. The one the laser are disabled because uh, I don't want my inventions in government's ha in the hands of the government. You never know what these guys do with that. That's right. I think I'm probably probably a shot of me kind of like musing, talking to myself slightly, of like you know, I think I'm, I think I'm making some progress with the boy. You know, maybe next summer he might suit up again. And you see the cars kind of lowering slightly from the <laughs> in the back window. Nice, nice, uh, cool. So we jump to you guys uh, around pancakes. I think this is a perfect opportunity for just a general refresh scene for you. Um, anything you guys wanted to hit in that scene? We don't, I'm not going to make you like relive what you did, but. I'd imagine there would be some storytelling along those lines, but anything? Yeah, I think it's basically like, uh, I kind of, I'm still kind of amazed that Dog can go and just tear this thing apart with her, basically with a crowbar. That seems still kind of amazing. Yeah, I'm going to be sore tomorrow, but... Or Robots, they're like a kid who's just getting started and they learn one good, clean, straight and they think that's going to solve every problem they've got in the fight. It ain't true. 
I mean, hell, Brutus, you you took out uh, you took out the big one there with one one doohickey, just gadgeted it right out of the just gone. Yep. Truth is, I got lucky. I got damn lucky to hit that. And you spot. didn't get your face blasted off. And I didn't get my yeah. That I I didn't expect her to blow up like that actually i wouldn't have stood next to her thanks for the the thing with steve i i wouldn't have enjoyed having a proton bomb explode in my head mm. well, done that once and then it's not fun a lot less flipping than back in the day yeah you know we keep saying back in the day but we looked we looked pretty good in there we we handled this as well. I could barely follow you with my eye. It's true. And, and doors ripped off, robots exploding, and and wrath. You charmed the Lady Trons right on through. Dog kicks way back and like puts her boots on the table and is like, "Yep, we still got it." <sighs> Nice. I will and then sit. immediately the waitress is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the waitress who knows you really well. She's not going to, she knows better than to like shove your boots off, but she also knows if she gives you the like the, the pointer. Oh, and there is a thought bubble above Brutus's head like, at least this time I wasn't the one who got, whose inventions got the shit kicked out, kicked out of them. <laughs> right. It's true. Four spark back for everyone. That was a lovely refresh scene. I'd like to see a few scenes at home um, for each of you, or a scene at home with each of uh, of our group, because a few of them we've we've alluded to, but I'm really curious what your home life uh, looks like. So, who feels inspired? Who'd like to go first? I mean. I think there was uh, like a Sunday dinner or something happening at uh, Raphael's. Yep. Um, is it at Raphael's or does Raphael go to? I think he, he would kind of host it, but there would be children doing most of the cooking and bringing the food. Yeah, yeah. We like pick up outside. What does your house look like? What is Raphael's house um, like? I think, don't think anything ostentatious. I think it's... Um... um I think it's um, enough space for him. Maybe a little bit more space than he technically needs. I think there's like a a cellar that was is like a training room, but it's mainly just boxes. Um, like a training, like a sparring ring kind of area. Uh, and I think there's a lot of uh, photos of heroes through through decades. Slightly faded photos on the walls. Nice. Doesn't hide any. It doesn't, there's not like a secret. Once you're in the house, it's not a secret that he's connected in some way to heroes. Um, I think there is, uh, yeah, there is some uh, some of the children and uh, husbands and wives of children and such in the kitchen, kind of warming up things, setting out plates. I think it'll, at least at one point, some sort of um, hawk jet thing hovers over the house and somebody rapples down <laughs> like into the garden. And then it kind of, then there's like a ripple as it kind of becomes invisible and goes into silent mode above the house. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm like sitting on the uh, veranda, kind of just like, I can give a little nod to the ones in the suit. You go rise. I also give. I give him the nod as well. Uh, yeah. Her, yeah. Hugo arrives with his wife and, and his couple of kids, and his wife's carrying the like food from the instant pot. You see the little steam Ooh. wafting off of it. But yeah, the smells fantastic. Well, I I converted the the recipe that you're you gave to Hugo, it sounded really good. And I thought, hey, if I could whip it up in the Instant Pot, 
It's like modernizing a classic. You, you have to mix things with these things up. It's a, I look forward to tasting it. Nice. Uh, and so we show a couple of panels of the family. Mm. I mean, it's extended family, right? It's like three generations all eating around this big, like yeah. you put a couple extra leaves in the table to extend it kind of deal. Yeah. And is there a kid's table as well? Like in the, in the, in another room where it's like a smaller yes. table. Uh, I think one of them would be a young, a younger sidekick in costume. The rest would be just civilian clothes. Nice. And I think there's at least some of my uh, children would be in just, you know, hoods pulled back, you know, cow, cowls pulled back, gloves off. Oh, and I, and, and I think there's like a long, uh, a long standing, like no business talk at the table. So mm-hmm. Hugo doesn't talk about Parma and stuff and yeah. your side of the family that still is involved in the work. Uh, yeah, I think there's, uh, there's a daughter who's like, you know, she's got, you can see she's like, she's smiling as she's like collecting the food, but she's like a busted lip, black eye. You can tell, you know, you, you can see like the knuckles are kind of reddened on one hand. Is this a, a grown-up daughter or the sidekick? Grown-up or? daughter, yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, and you can tell she's got... And maybe story. like between uh, a couple of the siblings, like one of them spots it and just like does like a fist bump <laughs> with a kind of like a, a head shake from Hugo. Nice. Yes, of course, Hugo does not approve of such uh, unauthorized, illegal vigilantism. That's cool. Um, so how do, how do we wrap up the scene? Like, what are the last few panels that we see? I think it's just, you know, everyone tucking into the food and, you know, there's this babble of conversations, lots of little speech bubbles of, you know, snippets of uh, conversation. And, and know, imagine everybody is like bilingual, right? So there's like all yeah, this it's, kind of it's, slipping it's in and big, out of yeah, English, Spanish mix. kind of stuff. Uh, that's awesome. I love, I love that multicultural kind of and thing. It's like, even though there's like, you know, the kind of an official no business talk, I think from the kids' table, you're hearing, the, you know, the young teen sidekick, or, you know, low end teen sidekick kind of regaling the kids or the kids say about his what he's been up to. Nice. And I think one last uh one last panel we see the the teen sidekick and uh Hugo's Hugo's daughter and they are like creeping down the stairs and the teen sidekick is pointing and and uh, grabs a little bit of her little cape and kind of wipes off some of the dust from some of the photos and is showing it to Hugo's daughter and then they go over to the like ancient chest and open it up and there's the peacock's mask and and uh and of course the peacock has his like crazy whip thing and his uh his little tails you know from the cloak that he wears and their their daughter's like looking at it yeah i kind of like that what about who 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 else who wants to go next? This is totally a popcorn thing. Don't go next, I think. All right. Yeah. Doug pulls the bike into the garage and does the security sequence and has a couple of moments of just uh appreciating how it looks without the hologram on sort of pats the side of it closes the garage and and then sets out on the walk not back straight to the house but to a sort of fenced off area with a pretty big sort of multi doghouse sort of thing where it's, you know, if you smushed like four or five dog houses together, mm-hmm. you get this, right? Um, some other neat things and dog whistles and about five dogs come barreling out, excited, you know, paws high up on the fence. And she goes, opens up 
the fence space and lets them have a run outside and greets a few of them. For one of them, she's like, all right, buddy, show me your paw. Come on. And, you know, checks on his pads real quick. Sees that it's fine, lets him go out and have a run. That goes into the house through the back door, announces that she's back. Nice. And we see Bon, right? And Bon will be mm-hmm. of the same age as Dog. Yep. Uh, I imagine that Bon has probably kept hold of some of her more punk aesthetic, maybe uh, long braids and the side of her head, one side of her head is, is shaved. And you see there are like these little, someone might tell themselves as tattoos, but it's probably some kind of weird implants. What were you up to today? Oh, went on a ride. Saw the mall walkers. Broke some robots. Pretty busy day. Did you find any homes for the dogs? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, we adopted out that golden retriever. So we're not going to see him again. <sighs> Mixed feelings. I know, he was a good boy. <sighs> then we also got got that one Muttley fixed up. So she's in a forever home. I think they're going to name her Patches. That's cute. Not bad. Yeah. What you been up to today? Uh, Double trick rule checking the slab. It caught a broadcast. There's not supposed to be anything running those frequencies in this whole quadrant. Right. And there's no Zolothians anymore, right? Not as far as I know. Hmm. What did what it say? Contest of champions. They haven't had that in 50 years. <sighs> Boy. Now walk over to wherever we keep the Mojo Slab with her. Yeah. Prod at it and look for a, a replay of the broadcast. Sure enough, it responds to your touch as it has, as, as if it has not been inert for decades. I'll be. And yeah, you see the broadcast, there's no like there are voiceovers but there's no one person talking and it's Mm -hmm. showing old snippets of mojo verse stuff and you see a number of fights that dog doesn't recognize but you also see a little footage of some people that you've fought alongside fought against and there's like clever like in between there's like one bit of of dog young dog uh racing along on the bike and Bon will reach over and she kind of brushes against you. She does, but she taps it and it pauses on that. See, that that's a good one, but you don't get any residuals off that. Don't want them. I pity all of these fools. Me too. So you're not tempted, right? No. She gives you a side hug. And... I kiss the top of her head. I'm going to draw a bath. Oh, that sounds good. You are kind of smelly. Yeah. All right. See so you when I smell nice again. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Cool. And then I 
draw my bath and soak in it, just shake my head. Nice. Anything else you want from this scene? Nah. Okay. Cool. All right. Who's next? You want to go, Sabine, or me? Me. All right. I think we see a small apartment. It's it's comfortable. Um, there are pictures all over the wall of uh, commendations and moments of Golden Boy with the great heroes of yore. There's even a picture of him shaking hands with Ronald Reagan after his uh, uh, exploits at one point. Um, you you see golden boy puttering in the kitchen as he turns around and he comes back with a little tray with his tv dinner on it goldie's trotting along beside um as they get to the kind of easy chair and he sits down and pulls a tv tray in front of him and sets it down and pulls one of his chicken nuggets off and looks over it's golden brown goldie throws one to to the dog you see beside the chair is where he's already beginning to stitch together uh a little suit for goldie it, it has a small cape <laughs> um the noticeable thing is there are no pictures of family nowhere on any of the walls on any of the tables Oh, the boy just never had time for that. And he sits down and flicks on the TV, you know, and yeah, circling through the channels. Do you see a splash go up on one? General Melee attacking the local, uh, uh, Old Country Buffet says he will not allow there to be senior citizen discounts any longer. Golden Boy. <sighs> Takes his little TV dinner and sets it down on the floor. Eh, not this time, Goldie. You can come with me next time. As he pulls the TV tray to the side, pulls up his phone. Eh, Siri thing! Walkers! Assemble at the country buffet! And as we pan from the phone, we just see the window, the curtains kind of flapping, and a golden streak in the distance. Oh, this general me like God, what a dick. That's great. Oh, that's that's just delightful. Sweet. Um me, right? Um yeah, well as I said, Brutus has um a house. Uh, it's not fancy or anything, it's it's modern. It has a bit of a garden. There is a gardener, but he's not around right now. And as he comes home, he's, he lives alone. He has a per people who come, or maybe he doesn't have people. He, have, he has Roombas. There's Roomba zooming around. And, and um, of course, he has a cat. And as he comes home, he first starts taking care of the cat, Tinkerbell, who's young, actually, and uh, is kind of uh, happy to see somebody and wants attention right now so he has to go and, and play with the cat and do a kind of a laser pointer thing with his electromagnetic uh, screwdriver and he try he sits down and he's kind of exhausted and he is it's a pretty spare house it's the scandinavian darkness that you have in modern modern interior design there are not a lot of there's some art but that that doesn't it doesn't look warm it looks like a place where you go to to be not exactly it doesn't really look like a home 
um, he uh, potters around with his cat, he puts some cream on his injuries. You can see somewhere in the background there is a picture, it's a photo of maybe him and wife and child, but it's blurred. You can't really really identify who's on there and he doesn't he doesn't really look at it. Uh, at the end, uh, when, once the cat has fallen asleep, exhausted, uh, he and fed, he will then go over, open the secret door to a secret lab because he has to have one. It's not really secret. It's just uh, it's just a coded door so that not everybody can walk in there because it's actually a bit dangerous. And he goes in there and he unpacks his bag and then he has this golden head of the droid. And he puts it on the table and he looks at it and I says, I just wonder what I can do with you. You seem kind of friendly and then he turns it on and see a little flicker in the eyes and rich say something please what oh hello i'm having an out of body experience well i think we should fix that and i think we should then roll credits nice cool well, it's a little on the early side, but it feels like that would be an end of an issue to me. So let's go ahead and do our end of issue, uh, end of session XP stuff. And uh, again, I have not memorized the page, but I found it. So at the end of every issue, the entire table of GMM players should discuss the following questions. Did you clash with someone who threatened your neighborhood? Definitely. Did you protect the citizens of your neighborhood at least once? I think so, indirectly by stopping the platinum bombshell. Did you defeat a villain or have a conflict with your rival team? I mean, maybe you defeat a villain, but you totally had a conflict with your rival team. Thanks, golden boy. Oh, three XP for everybody. Now I'll go around the horn, starting from right, going to the left on the character keeper. So for the cyclist, did you struggle with your normal day-to-day -day obligations? I don't think we hit that at all in this game for anybody, so I don't see that one. Uh, did you support another teammate when they needed you? I think Brutus did that, yeah? Cool. So four XP for Brutus. Dog, uh, did you struggle with your normal Again, I don't think anybody did. That's really on me more than you guys. Did you support another teammate when they needed you? I think so. Four XP for you. I'm not even going to ask the question because it's making me sad that I did such a bad job with day-to-day -day obligations. So, uh, so for Raphael, did you support another teammate when they needed you? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, maybe I actually did. Um, with you go? Yeah. I'm into that. Yes. Yeah, no. That's kind no, of that totally it's, that sounds good. So yes, uh, five XP for you. And then Golden Boy. I think I supported folks. Absolutely. Awesome. So that gets our XP. Let's go around and um, do a quick bit of stars and wishes. So we'll start with Tyler. Did you have any wishes, things you'd like to see in future sessions or uh, anything that fell short of expectations that you wish could be different for future presentations if you hit them all? I'd like to see these characters again. Um, there's something really touching about the characters. And I think I mentioned the last time, I, I really appreciate the struggle against ageism. Um, especially as I get older, but you know, I, I really appreciate these characters going out and doing, and in a lot of ways, just flat out not believing when other people tell them you can't. Um, and and something about that really touches me. I would like to see these characters again. So there's a wish. Um, Other than that, I'll be honest, I, I think the game supported it. 
a lot. I think it really did. And um, if there was any wish at all in the full run, I wish we had have had more chance to, co to actually connect with the community. We never really had a chance to do that. And that's kind of a shame. It is. I definitely think it's a missed opportunity. I've got to think of ways to, to bring that in because I like that aspect of hit the streets. And I'm, I think these characters absolutely could meet that need. And I definitely want to see it. So I hear you on that, Tyler. Thank you. Jen, what wishes did you have? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to echo Tyler a bit here and say I'd love to see these characters again. Um, I, I love, I love their their struggle and and how they approach it. You know, so that's very pleasing. Uh, I would also like to see more civilian content. Um, you know, I love the punchy superheroic action, but but I also like the the humorous, bittersweet juxtaposition of these folks who all used to be larger than life fitting into life. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Jen. Alex, what about you? What wishes did you have? Mm. <gasps> Only a minor one, but the, I I still want my uh, Brutus uh, Raphael flashback at some point. Um, yeah, I yeah, me really too. like this. Yeah, I really like the characters, and yeah, I especially after everyone's little epilogue scenes, which are all fantastic. Uh, I want to see more of these characters. I think I went like oddly backwards and I think I jumped Alex, didn't I? So Sabine, did you have any wishes? Um, oh, I'll echo everyone when I say I want to see these characters again because they're really, I think there is really potential there. There are a lot of stories that haven't been told or haven't been touched about. There's so much background here. And I really, I really want to, want to know how we will, uh, how, to see how everybody would interact with Bomb, for example, or, uh, yeah, I mean, try to get Tyler, uh, not Tyler, try to get Marty onto Tinder or something like that. And, uh, and or yeah. Or be his wingman, that would be fun. Yes. Yeah, that, that's your job, not mine. <laughs> um, and I would like at one point to figure out what, what totally went wrong with Brutus and his wife and, and his child. I mean, yeah. I have some ideas, but. Uh, I appreciated that because I was like, oh yeah, I definitely am curious about that. That's cool. Yeah, that's why he was honking so hard when you had that heart to heart with your son. He just, just wanted to get out of there. But driving away seemed kind of assholey, so. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was my wish. Cool. Um, what did you have for stars? Did you have a couple of st stars stand out? Oh, should I? Uh, have, have I forgotten? Oh, yeah, stars, everyone. Really cool. I love the characters. I still love Golden Boy. He's so... I just want to sit him down and have a milkshake and, and explain to him how a phone works and stuff like that. And he's really, he's like a, like a grandpa. Well, okay, he's like a father that I, I would like, that I would love to have. I mean, I love my father that I have, but uh, this one is also really nice. And I love the way Raphael interacted with his family, his huge family and the whole, yeah, and you're a superhero and you have superpowers as well. And, and so do you. Wow. And uh, I still want to know more about the Mojo world. And also, I really love uh, Doc going, I'm kicking in the door. Mm, we don't talk. <laughs> That's, that's, uh, yeah, I like that. Why let them talk to the door? They'll do it for so long. Uh. <laughs> oh, Lord. Like, there's a part of me that wants to do a refresh scene to, of bickering. Like, if you bicker about the old days, it's a refresh scene in a way. I think that might be a thing I'd just go ahead and we'll try out next time. Jen, did you have any uh, couple stars you want to hand out?
I thought there was some good creativity this session. You know, Raphael doing the the scarf flip around the wrist and then that was cool. the pulse beam. Uh, I loved Golden Boy's save against the laser. That was super cool. I, I thought the sedan was toast. I was like, yep, this is a thing that's going to happen. Oh, well. Nope. Yeah. But instead, Golden Boy pulled the save. It was quite nice. Um, I liked how the refresh scenes sort of hit better timing wise this session. You know, I felt like there was a good ebb and flow going on, sort of a back and forth. Uh, I like how this team sort of coheres as a team. You know, it's. Uh, we all have our differences, but we're all also experienced enough to not let that get in our ways. So that was quite fun. And I liked the, the throwback villain. Poor guy. <laughs> I'm glad you like this throwback villain. I'm very happy that worked out. Um, and I get to show off all the pictures I've been sitting. I've had that module since I saw the cover and went, that looks dumb totally, and fun. Totally cheesy and fun. Cheesy and fun. Uh, so I'm glad that worked out. Thank you. Sometimes you just need cheese. Alex, what about you? Do you have a couple of stars stand out? Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I said before, the epilogues I thought were all fantastic. Like, there were some really poignant, like, and like, I mean, Brutus had like the sad one, and I was like, with Golden Boy, I was like, are you going to make me cry as well? And then he just like shifts it up at the end. I was like, I love that. It was a, it was a whole journey in one little epilogue. And and Jens was just lovely. Uh, that little, yeah, that bit of doubt and the, with the is it funny, fun, bon. bon, 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 yeah, um, like bon bon, but just once. Bon. Yeah, <laughs> once is enough. Uh, and I think yeah, I I thought the. That kind of we brought the between Raphael and uh, Brutus. That kind of just low key tension, not exactly tension, but you know, needling. Yeah, needling came through a bit more. Nice, a bit more oh, the hawking horn was my favorite. Yeah. Of the needling. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Alex Tyler. Yeah. Did you have any? Uh, yeah. Um, again, I thought the system worked well, but when you talk about that bickering as a possible refresh, that's a very clever idea because it refreshes in the idea of us remembering what we were. Mm -hmm. And that's a neat thing. So star to your kind of being able to adapt. And, and that's this whole thing. Adapt a game you made into something that's really quite different um, in application, but the system really proved to be exactly on point for for what it was supposed to be so huge star on thank you on hit the street um the uh i i, I love dog at home i i just think that's so sweet and the you know the temptation and just turning it down I think is wonderful kind of that that's behind me sort of thing is cool. Uh, I just, I really liked it. I, it, it hit just the right note for me. Um, I, I also really liked Raph at home. I loved seeing the family. Um, but at the same time, I thought Raph was really, Alex, you were really hot through this one. You had a lot of good solid moments. Um, I love the uh, dealing with the two we first encountered, the two Lady Trons we first encounter. I, you know, going forward, I would love to see Raph the Lothario as a thing. I just think that's a just a really cool aspect to the character, and uh, I, and I thought it, you play it nice and subtle and and interesting all the time. And uh, Sabine, I like the 
extreme capability of Brutus, but I like the still lingering kind of creepiness of Brutus. I love the head and the play back and forth between you and Rich. Rich kind of getting on the spot, you know, I'm having an out of body experience. And it threw back to something you said last session of wanting to have, you know, I could take this and put it on something else. Your response, well, then why don't we fix that? Was just perfect. So that was was a perfect call and response. Like Sabine, you really nailed it. It was really nicely done. So huge stars all around. Cool. I couldn't agree more. Thank you all for making such vibrant characters. I mean, I, I kind of come to depend on it and you guys always come through and they're different. Like you have different characters within you, all of you. It's pretty lovely. Uh, So we'll bring this two shot of hit the mall, defend the shops. Didn't defend any shops. What? I don't know. Like not many shops that were still open. How do you defend like the dollar store? Uh, So we'll bring this to a close and uh, we'll play it next week. And uh, we're about to have a brief conversation to figure out what we're going to play next week. So thank you all so much. And uh, we'll stop it here.